Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Intuition. First of all, let me give a shout out to the subscriber who requested this week's video, Yusra Sir. Thank you for the question. I always tell you guys if you have any questions or if you have any video requests, always leave it in the comment section below because I do read those and I will respond to them. So hopefully this video is a testament to the fact that I actually respond to you guys when you have a video request. And you all should definitely know if you've been following this channel for any amount of time that I love questions, right? So definitely don't be afraid to leave questions in the comment section. All right, so today's video is going to be a bio stats video about independent and dependent variables, about independent and dependent variables and their impact on different types of studies. Okay, let's dive into it. Question number one. Question number one says, a large study of 4,324 patients will be conducted to determine the efficacy of a new antidepressant medication called drug A. The patients will be randomly divided into two groups to either receive Zoloft or drug A. And the outcome of interest is the extent to which symptoms of depression is decreased on a scale of 1 to 10. What is the independent variable of this study? We're just going to be testing a new drug, drug A, versus a current standard of therapy, Zoloft. So we're being asked to determine what the independent variable is. The independent variable is the input, and the input is determined by the person doing the experiment. So in this case, we have a group of patients and we're going to give them an input. And then we're going to wait a while and then look at the output. Really what we want to see is we want to see if there's a pattern between the input and the output. And what we get to control is the input, and the input is the independent variable. So let's go ahead and look at the answer choices and determine which one is the proper input. Answer choice A says the one to 10 depression scale. Is that an input? Is that the independent variable? No, right? The one to 10 depression scale is a tool that we're going to be using to measure our output, which is the extent to which depression is decreased, right? So this is just a tool, this is not a variable. So A is incorrect. Answer choice B says the drug Zoloft. First of all, is that a variable? That's not a variable, right? The drug Zoloft is the drug Zoloft. Zoloft cannot turn into a different drug, which means it's not a variable. That is a constant. A variable is something that can change, right? Zoloft is not subjected to change. Zoloft is Zoloft. The drug is what it is. That is a constant, not a variable. That's completely wrong. So now let's look at answer choice C. C says the extent to which depression is reduced. The extent to which depression is reduced, that is the output of the study, right? The extent to which the depression is reduced is not going to be the independent variable. So that would be the dependent variable, not the independent variable. And therefore the correct answer has to be answer choice D, which says the drug given to each patient. Exactly. That is the input that we get to control. We get to control the drug given to each patient because we get to select which patients get the drug Zoloft versus which patients get the drug A. That is the input that we have control over and therefore that is our independent variable. And that is the correct answer. So hopefully the distinction between independent and dependent variable is making more sense to you. All right, let's go on to question number two. Question number two says, cohort versus case control studies can be difficult to distinguish due to such a subtle difference between the two types of studies. If an exposure X is a known risk to an outcome Y, which of the following statements correctly labels the variables X and Y in a cohort or case control study? Select all that apply. Now that we have a pretty good understanding of independent and dependent variables, we should be able to answer this question, right? So now that we know the difference between independent and dependent variable, we need to know the difference between case control and cohort studies. Case control study is a type of study where you get to control the cases. And case is just another word for outcome, which in this case is the variable Y. X is the exposure and Y is the outcome or the effect. So exposure to a variable X causes the effect of a variable Y. For example, smoking causes cancer. Smoking would be X, cancer would be Y. So when it comes to case control studies, what you get to control is the cases, which means you get to control the variable Y, which means that you get to select patients who have the outcome Y and patients who don't have the outcome Y. Going back to the smoking cancer example, you get to select which patients, which patients have cancer and which patients don't have cancer. And then what you do is you work backwards to see which patients were exposed to smoking and which patients were not exposed to smoking. So in this case, whether the patient smoke or didn't smoke, becomes an outcome that becomes the output of your study so case control studies and cohort studies are very similar except that the 
independent variable and the dependent variable switch in these two different cases. So in a cohort study, the independent variable will be whether the patient smoked or did not smoke. That would be the exposure that you get to select for. So you would select certain patients who smoke and select certain patients who did not smoke. And then you will look at the output of whether or not cancer was higher in one group versus the other group. So that's the difference between these two types of studies. So we should be able to look at the answer choices and pick out the right answers. Answer choice A says, the independent and dependent variables in a case control study would be X and Y respectively. That's wrong. We already said that in a case control study, the outcome is the independent variable, which would be the variable Y, not the variable X. Answer choice B says, the independent and dependent variables in a cohort study would be Y and X respectively. This is also wrong because in a cohort study, the exposure is the independent variable. So this would be also incorrect. Answer choice C says, the independent and dependent variables in a case control study would be Y and X respectively. That's correct. Case control study, the outcome becomes the independent variable and the exposure is the independent variable. So answer choice C is correct. And now let's look at answer choice D, which says, the independent and dependent variables in a cohort study would be X and Y respectively. That's correct. In a cohort study, we control the exposure and then look for the outcome. So go ahead and let me know in the comment section if this makes sense to you and if this helps you understand the difference between these two types of studies, okay? Now let's go on to question number three. Question number three says, a pharmacist analyzes the patients at her clinic and determined that 80% of her patients who are currently taken antihypertensive medications also have a medical diagnosis for obesity. This would be best classified as what type of study? This doesn't even really sound like a study, right? The pharmacist is just making an observation. It's just looking at the current percentage of patients who have hypertension and obesity at the same time. There's no flow of time that is occurring in the study. The pharmacist is making a simple observation in time, which means that this is a simple cross-sectional study. So the correct answer would be answer choice B, a cross-sectional study, all right? Okay, so there you have it. Let me know if all of that made sense to you guys. If it didn't, leave a comment in the comment section below. If you have any video requests, any questions that we can clarify, also go ahead and leave that in the comment section below. Remember, we love questions on this video. That's how we learn and that's how we grow together. So go ahead, like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.